People are not always in your life forever. People are here for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And it's not that every single person that you meet is going to be one of these lifetime people, but this episode specifically is really about helping you find those lifetime people. The Mindspo Podcast. What do you see with your mind's eyes? Welcome back. Let's elevate. Roll your shoulders up and back. Unclench your jaw. Elongate your spine as you take a deep breath in. And now, exhale. Now take your mind to that person, place, or thing that you have gratitude for and start to feel into the joy available to you at all times. Elevate into a higher vibration as we expand together and dive in to this conversation. Welcome to the Mindspo podcast. My name is Rochelle Fox. I am your host and you are tuning in for another episode in our Mindspo manifestation series brought to you by Manifesty app. Now, today's episode is all around friendships and specifically I'm diving into how you can attract soul aligned friendships into your life. Now, if you didn't listen to last week's manifesting episode, I recommend going back because I really spoke last week about how it's important to stop trying to change people in your life that maybe are not on the same path as you, maybe are not interested in the same things as you. Stop trying to change those old friendships and rather focus on creating brand new soul aligned friendships. And in this episode, I really want to dive into how you can do that, how you can find your soul family, how you can attract people into your life that are on a similar path to you, that like light you up, that really recharge your soul rather than drain you. And I, I, I'm really excited about this episode because friendships are so important. And I feel sometimes in my life, I have probably not valued friendship as much as I should. I've been in a long-term relationship for around 12 years now. And because of that long-term relationship, sometimes I've neglected working on friendships and building my friendships because I feel like I have found like my best friend for life. But when it comes to life, it is so important to have friendships, to have community outside of our romantic relationships and to really work on finding quality people that feel in alignment with the person that we are now. I spoke about this last week, but I think we have to realize that people are not always in your life forever. People are here for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And it's not that every single person that you meet is going to be one of these lifetime people, but this episode specifically is really about helping you find those lifetime people, helping you find those people that you can imagine yourself getting old with, that you can imagine yourself connecting with in the years to come, and how to really cultivate an energy and attract those people into your life through a series of steps. So I've really done a lot of work on today's episode because I wanted to get super specific. I wanted to hit it from many different angles, and I really am manifesting that this episode is going to change your life and it is going to be the episode that leads you to attracting your soul fam into your life. So I'm setting that intention right here, right now. I know that that's a big call, but let's just call that in together. Can we set the intention that this episode is going to change your life? This episode is going to help you attract your soul family, help you attract the people that light you up, that encourage you, that are your cheerleaders, that are interested in the same things that you are interested in, that feel like family. I'm calling that in for you. Set that intention with me. Know that if you can see it in your mind's eye, if you can feel it in your heart, then you can attract it, then you can create it in your life. And with all that said, let's get into my eight tips. 
And P.S. I do just want to say before I get into the eight tips, I just remembered that at the end of this episode, after each of the eight tips, there is going to be a manifestation technique, an action step that I really want you to try. So make sure you stay until the very end. Tip number one, which you are already doing by listening to this podcast, but it's a foundational tip that I wanted to mention. And that is that in order to attract soul-led, high-aligned people into your life, you need to be working on yourself. You need to be someone that is leading a soul-led, aligned life. And that really means having self-awareness, being someone that is willing to take constructive criticism, being someone that is taking responsibility for their life and isn't in this, oh, poor me, the world is happening to me kind of story. If you're listening to this podcast, if you're a follower of Mindspo, if you're on this personal growth journey, I know that you are already doing this step, but it is just like a foundational step that needs to be mentioned. Tip number two is a big one. And that is if you want a friend, then you need to be a friend. So really look at your life and look at yourself and ask yourself, are you being the kind of person that you would want to be friends with? Are you living to the kinds of values that you expect other people that you want to be friends with to live up to in your life? Something that I really like to analyze here is if you really want solar line friends in your life, then I'm guessing you want friends that speak kindly about you behind your back. You want people that are saying nice things about you behind your back. You want to attract people that are cheerleaders, that are uplifting, that are conscious. So are you being an uplifting, cheerleader, conscious person, or are you currently stuck in a cycle of gossiping and talking down on other people? To be honest, I have girls, then I hear them slagging off all their friends back home, but then at the same time, they're talking about how they want to attract like high vibe, amazing people into their life. And I think you have to realize that if I was a person that was looking to invite more friends into my life, which I always am, and I was around someone that was in one breath talking absolute smack about their friend back home and she's this and she's that and oh, I think this of her and then the next minute she's talking about like how conscious she is and how much she loves this and that and yoga. And and I'd only just met her. I'd be like, yo, this is a red flag because I don't want to be friends with someone that is potentially gossiping and talking shit about me behind my back and judging me and tearing me apart. So you have to ask yourself, like, are you doing that while also saying you want to attract people that don't do that? And I feel like sometimes people don't even realize they're doing this because they're in a circle of friends that are in that sort of toxic judgment, gossipy, tearing each other down kind of environment. And they're on one hand being like, I really want to get out of this. I I hate this energy. But then they're just also ripping on those people. So you've got to be aware of this and start to just ask yourself, if you want to find friends, then you need to be the kind of friend that you want to find. And really write down like, what are the values that you want in a friend? And are you you living to those values? Are you being that kind of person? Because you don't attract what you want, you attract what you are, who you are being. So if you want to attract a certain kind of person into your life, then you need to actually be that kind of person in order to become an energetic match to it. My third tip is to be in an abundant friendship mindset. This is something that I used to really struggle with, and it was kind of one of the reasons why I feel like for so long I wasn't finding the kind of friends that I wanted to be friends with in my life. I had this story that I was repeating out loud to Soul and to anyone that would listen that, oh, it's just so hard to make friends as an adult, and oh, these people, it's just so hard to find this kind of person, and oh, there's just not that many people like that in the world. So I was taking this kind of scarcity approach to the kind of person that I wanted to attract. I was treating them like they were this golden goose or this kind of like pot at the end of a mythical rainbow that I was never going to get to. And I was having a scarcity mindset. And look, having a scarcity mindset is something that I've done a lot of work on. And I feel like the attitudes that we have in money generally kind of like reflect a lot of attitudes in our life. If we feel that there is a lack of money or if we're in scarcity around money, we've 
we've had a scarcity story, then chances are that scarcity story won't just show up in our finances, but it'll also show up in other areas of our life because that is our conditioning. That is our programming. So I had to do a lot of work on this years ago and I had to really reprogram myself and tell myself there are so many incredible, conscious, cool people in the world. There are so many people that are interested in the same things I am interested in. There are so many soul aligned friends out there waiting for me. I just need to go out there, get out of my comfort zone, knock on their door, not knock on their door, but get out of my comfort zone, follow them on social media, strike up a conversation and put myself out there to find them. And you've got to really remind yourself that they're there. And if you don't believe that they're there, then you won't find them. Like you will literally only attract what you believe. So this is a really simple one, but a really powerful one. I used to, when I was first shifting this, I would go and search hashtags like spirituality or conscious or sisterhood wound. Or I, to be honest, when I first started this, I would search the hashtag mental health. Like this is years ago. And I was like, are there other people out there like me that are girls that are going through mental health struggles that have been through a hard time that are willing to talk about this kind of stuff? I want to find more friends that are in this kind of energy that have this this same struggle as me because I felt really alone and I felt like no one else I knew had this stuff going on or was open about it. And I used to search hashtags and I would be amazed. I'd be like, wow, there's so many people online all around the world that have this similar interest, that have this similar challenge to me or are going through the same thing I am. So just really do the work to look out for more soul aligned friendships. And something I I do whenever I'm trying to read reset a scarcity mindset is I like to basically kind of play I spy. (laughs) This sounds kind of weird, but literally in your mind every single day, be playing the game of I spy when it comes to friendships. You can do this online. You can do this in real life. You can do it anywhere. Like go out there with your eyes, with your energy and constantly start looking for people that you feel would be on a similar energy or a similar vibration to you and start to teach your mind that, hang on a second, there are so many people out there that could be my friend. I am just not putting myself out there or I am just having this belief in my head or this story in my head that they don't exist. Sometimes something so simple like shifting a mindset or a belief like this can have the biggest impact. So really do the work to see the abundance of people that are out there. Get out of that scarcity mindset and you will be so surprised as to what happens. If you're listening to this podcast, I'm guessing that you are into manifestation, which means it's highly likely that you've made yourself a vision board before. Vision boards are super popular because they can really work. But have you heard of a vision board movie before? A vision board movie makes it easy to make use of one of the biggest manifestation secrets of them all, emotion. Why is emotion important? Because your emotions are literally energy in motion. It's a signal that you are sending out to the universe because what you focus on expands. And when you focus on a movie of your future and you feel an elevated emotion, you can literally supercharge your attraction ability. And that's why we created Manifesty, your manifestation bestie. We spent two years building the manifestation app of our dreams. And with it, you can make your very own manifestation vision board movie. Manifesty makes manifesting so easy with a whole set of functions that will literally turn your phone from a distraction machine into an attraction machine. And if you love this podcast, then I know you are going to love this app. You can download it right now for free. And if you choose to subscribe, it's also one of the best ways ways that you can support us here at Mindspo to continue the work that we do. Find it now in both app stores by searching Manifesty. That's manifest and then I-E. And start your free trial today. Thanks so much for listening. And now let's get back to the episode. My fourth tip is to stop focus on having to be interesting to other people and instead focus on being interested in other people. This is a game changer. So many people have this mentality when it goes to creating new friendships or attracting new relationships into their life that they have to be a charismatic, confident person that is super out there and extroverted. And that can just make them shut down from the get-go because maybe you're not extroverted. Maybe you are quite introverted. Maybe you don't feel very confident. And it can feel like, oh, I'm I'm just not the kind of person that's going to be able to do this and achieve this. Wrong. The best way to attract people and to really draw people in is to be interested in other people. Actually take the time to sit down and listen to other people and, and really listen. 
Don't just listen and think about what you're going to say next and formulate a response in your head and be like off thinking about how you can have a comeback of how this has affected you in your own life and tell your own story. No, listen, ask some questions, get them to go deeper into their story, like really get yourself to be someone that is consciously listening to people and listen with compassion and listen with care. It is such a unique skill and an important skill to be a listener. And I got to tell you, so many people don't know how to listen. It is something I personally have had to really work on. I am a pretty extroverted person to the outside world. I would call myself an introverted extrovert, being real, but that's a whole other podcast episode. But I I like to go out there and talk. And when I'm out in the world, a lot of people want me to talk and I can talk a lot about myself. And people ask me questions. And sometimes I talk so much and I get so carried away with all of my talking that I feel kind of people switch off. They get a bit over it. They're like, oh my God, she's just really loud and out there. And I've had to train myself to really learn to listen to people, to slow down, to really stop trying to entwine myself into their stories and instead really let them take the stage. And when I made this shift in my own life, gosh, I had such deeper relationships with people. That's when I really connected with my soul family. That is when I have really made relationships that are really rich because they weren't relationships that were just pedestaling me and just interested in me. They were relationships that worked both ways because it was the kind of people that were also interesting and they knew that I was interested in them. So this one's really important. And I feel as well, if you can go out there and really look someone in the eyes and really listen to what they are saying, that person is going to value you so much. So many people don't listen. Like honestly, people just talk about themselves and think about themselves and and they don't take the time to really care what the other person is going through. And it's a trait that I feel we've developed as humans and things like social media don't really help. But It's something that if you can work on and you can learn to be really interested in other people, you're going to become a magnetic person and people are really going to remember you. Something my partner, Sol, always says is he always reminds me that people actually feel the best after meeting you if they feel you listened to them, if you really allow them to talk and you ask them questions about them because we all love talking about ourselves. We love talking about us and our stories and the things that are going on. So it's not that you have to be the person telling the story. You actually just need to become a good listener. And the people that are telling the stories and are talking will be like, wow, that that person's really cool. They really care. They really listen to me. And this is a bit of a hack that I feel a lot of people don't know about. And for me personally, it's really helped me with attracting more soul aligned friendships. And it's also helped me just be a more compassionate person and yeah, just take the focus off myself, which is something that I really had to learn to do because I was someone that was always kind of taking center stage and being the person who speaks. And now these days I I really prefer to be the person who listens in social situations. Tip number five is to be a walking vibe. You know those people that walk into a room that are cool, calm, confident, collected, that just seem to know who they are and they have their own unique sense of style. These people that walk into a room and you notice them, you can just sense them. These to me are what I call walking vibes. I really aspire to be a walking vibe because these are the people that I'm attracted to. These are the people that I feel are magnetic. And it's not because they're loud and obnoxious or uh, out there. It's just because they're centered. I feel when you are the most attractive as a human, as a soul, it is when you're in alignment, when you're centered, when you know who you are, when you're so detached from what everyone else is thinking about you and you're more concerned with just being authentic to your true self. And you know that when you are your true self, when you are just being your true soul essence, that's when you're going to find your people. So you don't care if everyone doesn't like you because you're not 
for everyone. And that's okay. I really aspire to be like these kinds of people. And it's definitely like an energy that I I work at finding within myself. I've done a lot of self-work to really find out like who I am and to, you know, separate myself from these like layers. Like I feel like we're like onions. There's like layers and layers and layers that have grown over us. And at the core of this onion is just really who we are, this like soul essence. And for me, this has been a process of really finding out like who I am at a soul level, doing that deep work, doing that healing work and peeling away the things that I used as a mask to, I don't know, show up and be liked and loved by everyone when really doing those things didn't make me like or love myself. So doing that deep work and Also, just on like a lighter note, I also feel like it's been doing work on my appearance in a way that is more about finding my personal style. And I want to mention this because as much as we can talk about like feelings and vibes and the energy of people, and those things are all really important, but let's be honest, most of the time we notice people because of what they look like. As humans, we are constantly using our sense of sight. That is usually what we notice first about a person. And I feel one way you can really work at attracting people that are in alignment to you is to really make sure you're dressing as who you really want to be, like who you really are at your core, allowing your sense of style to shine through. I'll give you an example. I love wearing blue nails. I don't really know anyone else that wears blue nails. It's a kind of random color to put on your fingernails, but I love blue nails and blue metallic mermaid nails. And I love blue things. Like I'm constantly wearing blue and collecting blue and oh, collecting orange and things that look like the sunrise and allowing myself to express myself through color. Years ago, I used to try and suppress my love of color because on social media and Instagram, I thought you had to be like minimal and have everything washed out and have this like really clean girl aesthetic. And I love those sorts of aesthetics. I think they're epic, but it's not authentically me. I am a chaotic rainbow. I'm a splash of color. I'm gradients. And this is just like who I am as a person. I'm quite like an electric, bright, happy person in terms of my style and my color and my choices, the things that I gravitate to as as a human being are maybe sometimes people would say like a little childish. I had someone I really look up to one day turn around and go, you know what I love about you, Rochelle? Like you're not afraid to be a kid. Your whole entire style and aesthetic is super childish. And at the time I I almost took offense to that comment that that person said to me, but a little while after I really thought about it, I'm like, you know what? That's what I like about myself. I like that I'm like this childlike essence. I like that I don't have to have this like super clean girl, minimal, everything has to be perfect kind of energy. That That's just not really who I am behind this set right now. It's chaos controlled chaos, but a little bit of chaos. (laughs) And I think that the more we can allow ourselves to find out who we are and be who we authentically are, not only on a soul level, but on a physical level through our sense of style, through the way that we present ourselves, the more we will find people that are attracted to that essence. And I think that working on your sense of style and working on what you want to wear and the kind of things that you want to possess and have as an advertisement for what you're interested in is important, especially when it comes to finding friendship groups and meeting people. We are quite judgmental as humans. The first thing we notice about people is really what they look like. And then generally, if we're interested in what they look like or if we're intrigued by them physically, then we'll dive a little bit deeper. Some people won't admit that, but I think that's true for most people especially like in the dating world like you don't necessarily notice someone's energy first like the first thing most people notice about someone is their aesthetic is this person like a match for what I'm physically interested in there's no shame in that so allow yourself to be authentic to what it is that you actually like and make sure you're not pretending to be someone that you're not because then you're going to end up attracting other people that are in that same pretending energy so just make sure you You are authentic to yourself, to your true soul essence. And that to me is how you can be a walking vibe. My sixth tip is to be a cheerleader rather than being a competitor. 
If you want to attract soul aligned people into your life, this one is huge. You have to get yourself out of that competitive mindset, that it's me against you mindset. When someone else wins, I lose mindset. This is another version of that lack mentality coming up, that scarcity mentality. And I feel like it is the fastest way to just snuff out friendships and to really destroy what could be something so beautiful. I see this a lot, especially with women. A lot of us have a sister wound. We have been brought up in this society and in this kind of mentality that we have to be against each other and it's me against you and there's not enough room for all of us. And this is something that you really need to do the work on shifting if you want to attract friendships into your life that are going to be nourishing and fulfilling. This is something that I have done a lot of work on and it's one of my highest values in friendship. I am not interested in being friends with anyone that does not change cheer me on. It's probably like the fastest thing that I notice. Quite often I've had many times where I've told someone that I thought was a really good friend or that I wanted to be a good friend or that I had recently just met some kind of really good news. And I'd kind of have done this as a test and I've really watched their face to see their reaction, to see how they really felt about that good news. If they were cheering me on or if they were someone that secretly didn't want me to win. And this has been a massive indicator for me. You can always sense in someone's face just by those micro movements and just by their energy if they actually want good for you, if they actually want you to be succeeding in life or if they are secretly jealous and competing with you. So I think this is a really important thing to work on within yourself. Really do the work to move to that abundance mindset, to be a cheerleader for other people and to really start to understand that, you know, another person's light does not take light away from you. Another person succeeding doesn't mean that you lose. And when you do this work on yourself to shift this mindset, that's when you can start being a cheerleader for other people. And that's when you will also attract people that are a cheerleader for you. And this for me, like having people in my life that actually want the best for me is being so healing because I've had many friendships in my life where I feel like people were friends with me for the wrong reasons or secretly didn't actually want me to do well. And you don't want that kind of energy in your life. It's not something that's healthy to be around and it can be really draining and detrimental and really painful to go through. So do the work on yourself to really heal whatever scarcity or whatever sisterhood wound or whatever friendship wound or lack story that you have within yourself so that you can step into being the cheerleader for other people. And when you do this, oh my gosh, you're going to meet the most amazing people. I'll never forget my um, relationship with Megan Rose Lane that was a complete manifestation. That was something I really called in. That relationship has been one of the best relationships for me in terms of new friendships in the personal growth, coaching, spirituality space, because we literally just want each other to win and we are such cheerleaders for one another. If you haven't listened to Megan on the podcast, I'm going to put her episodes in the show notes because I've had her on the Mindspread podcast before. And we did a whole episode on the sisterhood wound that I feel you'll find really, really healing and useful if you want to do some specific work work on this point. And working on that wounding is so rewarding because I have this friendship with Megan now where we are constantly cheering each other on. We're constantly wanting each other to win. We are so proud of one another. We are each other's biggest cheerleaders and so much so that we now collaborate together. We are two people that could be seen as competitors in this industry, but instead we are sisters and we are there to really support one another. And it has led to even more abundance for both of us because we're just so open to working together and making magic. And yeah, it's just the best when you can heal this within yourself and find people that are also your cheerleaders. And it's something that I wish for everyone because there is nothing more amazing than having people in your corner cheering you on that have your back, that want you to win and you want them to win as well. My seventh tip is to embody the new kid on the block energy. If you're listening to this podcast and you're like, yes, I need this. I need to find find my soul family. I need to attract new friendship into my life. You set the intention at the beginning of this episode and you were speaking to me, then great. This tip specifically, this one's for you. Whenever I am 
just in this energy where I feel, you know what, I need a new friend. I want to find someone that I want to bring into my life, that I want to build my connections with. This is when I go into this new kid on the block energy. This is when I actively go and strike conversations with people. This is when I get out of my comfort zone and I go to that place that makes me feel a little bit weird to say hi to someone, maybe at the end of a yoga session. This is when I strike up a conversation in the change room with someone that I think has like a cool vibe in a place that you wouldn't normally strike up a conversation and I'm like, hey, if we're both at this club or if we're both at this gym, it means we might be interested in the same stuff. Like this is that this energy that is active. It's not passive. It's not just like sitting back and sitting there meditating and calling it in. It's actually getting out of your comfort zone and putting in a little bit of the work. And this doesn't mean that you're out there like chasing and being crazy and like messaging people back a million times that haven't replied to your first message or replying to every single one of their stories because that usually kind of gives a bit of a desperate vibe. But this just kind of means that you're casting a net. So just strike up conversations say hi to people, go out of your way to follow more people than usual and actually engage in their stories or write to them in the DMs and say something nice and just leave it there and see if they write back. Like just kind of go fishing with a very detached energy. Because if you really want to call on new friendships, then you need to make a little bit of effort. And that leads me on to my eighth tip, which is get yourself out of your comfort zone. And if you can invest in yourself and invest in friendship by booking a retreat. Now, look, I'm completely biased. I'm a retreat leader. I have a retreat business. And I wanted to put this tip in here, not only because I'm like, yo, this is what I do. Come come join me on a retreat. Yeah, cool. I would love you to do that. I'm such a big advocate of retreats. I absolutely love them. But oh my gosh, if you are looking to find soul fam, people, like people that are interested in these sorts of topics, they're at retreats and they're looking for you. When I lead retreats, I go through the same process every single time. I have day one of the retreat and like 27 women will rock up on the retreat. They'll all come as absolute strangers. They'll know no one. They will be so scared and so socially anxious and terrified. And they're like, oh my God, am I going to make any friends by the end of this week? Like, this is so weird. And then literally by the end of the week, they are crying, hugging, like planning their next few days, extending their trips with these people that they just met. Like people come on retreats as absolute strangers and they leave as soul fam. And it is so incredible to witness. It like, honestly, it's been so healing for me as someone that has gone through struggles with friendships before and has felt like it's hard to find friendships that are in alignment with the things that I'm interested in. Leading retreats has been like the biggest buster of my lack story in this whole entire topic because I have seen time after time, like every single retreat that I've ever led, people just come and they think that no one's going to be friends with them, no one's going to like them, that they're the stranger, that they're the loner, and then they leave just so connected and like they've found people that were like long lost sisters. And if you have the means to be able to invest in yourself and to go on a retreat, not only will you work on yourself and go see the world and get out there and have a holiday, but you'll also leave that experience with a whole entire new group of friends and friends that don't just know you on a surface level that, you know, you go out and drink with and, you know, know your favorite color or your favorite band or the food that you like to eat or the drama with your ex-boyfriend. Like, no, friends that know you on a deep soul level, people that know your insecurities, people that have seen you absolutely break down, people that have seen you just be a mess. Like the friendships that are built on retreats are just different kinds of friendships. It's it's like a different level of friendship because people just, they come fully open. And I think that's something that's so interesting that I've witnessed about retreats. Like people that go on retreats are all seeking something. They're all looking for something and they're all open to something because they've invested time, energy, effort to to come. So they're they're ready and they're accepting and, and they're there for that experience. So if you really want to find people, come on one of my retreats, mindsretreats.com, check out the next retreats we're doing or find a retreat company or a retreat facilitator or an influencer online that vibes with the energy or the things that you're wanting to work on and just book a retreat. Just do it once in your life and you'll make friends for life. I honestly, I, I guarantee it. It's just one of those things that I 
every single retreat. There's never been a retreat that I have been on that someone has come and they haven't made friends. Like everyone has always made friends, even if it's just one. And it is such a beautiful thing to see. And if you can't invest on going on a retreat, then just get yourself out of your comfort zone. Push yourself to get out there and to meet other people and to go and and say hi to people at the end of the yoga class or to go and do that event that, you know, you don't know anyone else going to is something that you really want to go and check out. Like go and do those experiences by yourself and have that new kid on the block energy. Go out there, say hi, be open, be your vulnerable, real, authentic self. And that's how you're going to magnetize and build those really deep soul core friendships that, you know, potentially could be with you for a lifetime. And finally, the action step for this podcast to really put a cherry on top and to energetically do the work and take action on everything that I'm saying and call in and set that intention for those friendships who enter your life is to do a scripting exercise. So I'm going to do a whole podcast on scripting, but scripting is a manifestation technique where you essentially journal. And what you do is you journal in present tense as though, you know, something has just happened, as though you are just reflecting on something that has just unfolded. So I want you to imagine you have just met your soul aligned BFF. This person is everything that you have been managing manifesting everything that you've been calling in. They are interested in the same things that you are interested in. They are someone that listens. They are someone that cares. They are someone that embodies all of the values that you have really wanted in a person. And I want you to write a journal entry as though you have just spent the day with them. And I want you just to be singing their praises in this journal entry. So really reflect on how they made you feel, what you did, what this friendship means to you, how it fills you up. And when you do this, again, Get into the energy, allow yourself to feel it, like really embody that emotion and that energy as though it has just happened and be in such a sense of gratitude and appreciation for that friendship and allow yourself to get creative. Don't limit yourself or hold yourself back. Like this is your dream person. This is the person that you have been calling and the person that you have been wishing for and write a whole entire page about what it was like to hang out with them, how you feel feel and allow yourself to feel all those feelings as you write. And once you're done, just let it go. Just surrender it and just know that they're coming. Know that they're coming as long as you show up and do the work, as long as you keep being a vibrational match to that person and you go through these different steps and these different tips that I have mentioned. That's really how you can continue to do the work, to hold the energy. Because remember, you don't attract what you want, you attract what you are. So be the kind of person that this person would be attracted to. Be the kind of person that would call in that kind of person. And to me, honestly, that's the authentic version of you. All you need to do is to be the authentic version of you, to be that true self that is within you and to trust that they are on their way. Anyway, that is it from me today. I really hope this episode was useful and actionable for you. I would love you to share this one on your stories if it resonated. Uh, I know so many people out there struggle with loneliness and friendship and just really wishing that they could find more people that were on the same level as them. So yeah, let's cast a net out and help other people find this podcast and hopefully in process of finding their podcast, find other people that are aligned with them and the kind of energy that they are interested in because I know they are out there. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for joining me for this episode. You can discover more from Mindspo on Instagram and TikTok by following at Mindspo and myself at Rochelle underscore Fox. If this episode inspired you, then please pass it on and share the love. And if you're new to our world and you want to elevate your mind and step into your best self, then be sure to download our app Manifesty from the App Store and take advantage of the free trial. With Manifesty, you can create your own vision board movies, practice powerful meditations and set affirmation reminders so your phone supports your journey towards that abundant vision of your future. And lastly, always remember, you create your own reality. So go and make some magic.